G'day audio files. Welcome to this bonus edition of the Sirens of Audio. Once again, my name's Dwayne, and I thought this time I would throw in some extras that were cut from an interview we did recently with Jez Fielder for our special on Sarah Jane Smith, the audio adventures produced by Big Finish. Jez has some fascinating stories, and if you haven't heard the episode that we did on Sarah Jane Smith, please do go back and have a listen to that or a, a watch of that because you'll get some fantastic stories there. But there were some great stories that were unrelated to Sarah Jane Smith that we had to cut out. And that's what's good about having a few weeks off. We can get some of those anecdotes and throw them into our bonus episodes. So I'm going to do that right now. Jez is going to talk about his experience or his fascination with Peter Wingard and how he once tried to get Peter Wingard to do some work with Big Finish. That's a fascinating and funny story about how all that came about. And he also talks about working with every different doctor that he has worked with in Big Finish. He's worked with uh, four of them, Tom Baker, Peter Davison, Sylvester McCoy and Colin Baker, and uh, they're all quite different. So we're going to hear from Jez himself uh, about his experiences with those particular doctors. But first, I'll throw in a trailer for Phantasmagoria, which is Big Finish main range story number two, uh, written by Mark Gatiss. And that is the first production that Jez appeared in in his dozens of, of uh, appearances in Big Finish. But this was the very first one. So I'll throw that in here and we'll be back with Jez in just a second. William. As in William and Mary, right? So they did teach you something at Brendan, then? I liked history. Well, now you can watch it happen. It's the 8th of March, 1702. My name is Nicholas Valentine. I prithee pardon, gentlemen, but I must make free with your purses. <coughs> Till next we meet. Good night, gentlemen. It has been a pleasure. Ha! A pleasure for you to be robbed by Major Billy Lovemore! If we had time, you and I could sit by the fire and natter on about mapping exterior continuums onto interior dimensions and so on and so forth. But we don't have time. Regrettably, no. However, for the sake of established history, that's probably no bad thing. There have been developments. Our client reports there is something odd going on in the vicinity. Disappearances. Then last night, something more. In the name of Christ! Help me! Who is it? What ails you? An also what? They're coming! They're coming for me! We shall play another game, you and I. I'm afraid the rules are of my own making. <laughs> I didn't know Mark Gatiss at all from, from League of Gentlemen because I hadn't watched it. Um, and I think only the first... Yeah, I'm sure, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I think the first series had been out. And, and it was. And I remember hearing somebody say, oh, he's the guy from the League, League of Gentlemen. And I was like, oh... That's that's all. I haven't I haven't watched it. I better watch it. But he was so he was so nice. Like we went to lunch and he was just full of enthusiasm about it. And he was really complimentary about what I was doing, which I wasn't expecting at all. Um, and it's just you 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 meet a lot of nice people when you work for Big Finish. You really you really do. Um, but Mark Gatiss was just kind of like, what you just go away thinking, what a nice person. What a what a genuinely lovely, warm, funny, quirky human being. And he told me all sorts of stories about one, about my heroes that he like heard anecdotes of like Peter Wingard. And I'm crazy about Peter Wingard. In fact, in fact, you can see Wingard is there. That's Peter Wingard and Vivian Lee. Where did your fascin fascination for Peter Wingard come from? Just watching it, just watching it. I mean, the first, um, when he was uh, number two in um, Checkmate in The Prisoner, because I was, I, I started watching The Prisoner when I was about sixteen. Uh, it was, a, it was being rerun on Channel Four in the UK, and I just remember watching it quite late at night and going, "What? What does this mean?" And it was just like a kind of dream, and I was obsessed with it from from, from that moment on. And then when I, then Wingard turns up, I didn't know who he was. This kind of eyeliner dude in um, in in the village, with the most incredible voice. I mean, like a kind of you know, slightly more modern George Sanders. It was just this honeyed, textured voice, and and what a what a presence! I just I just completely fell in love with Peter Wingard. I loved him. I was like, what else does he do? What? And I need to find somebody old. 
they'll know. And I found somebody old and they said, oh, yeah, he was a very, very famous back in the 70s. He should try Department S. I'm like, Department S, right. Go down to the video shop. What? What is what is Department S? And the bloke in the video shop's obviously like, oh, well, as it happens, I'm a very big fan of Department S. And then I get the box set for Christmas and then the, the, I get all the spin-off stuff and then it comes out on DVD and I watch it all. And then I then I say to um, to Gary Russell and Jason Haig Ellery, why don't you get Wingard in to do a big finish? And they were like, oh, we've tried. I, oh, you've tried? What, what, what do you mean? What happened? We didn't hear anything back. He's he's got an agent at ICM. We we just I said, oh, let me try. They went, all right. I said, if I get him, if I get him, I need to. I want to be in it with him. And they were like, all right, if you get him, you can be in it. I went, yes, ready. And I I I wrote to his um his fan club, um, and I and I explained. And then Jason got a call from the fan club asking if I was legit, <laughs> and he's like. Well, a difficult one to answer, but for the purposes of this conversation, yes. And uh, and and I was I was out in London um, late afternoon. I'd been to see some friends at the pub, and I was walking back um, back to where I was living in Westminster at the time. And my phone goes, don't recognise the number, don't answer those anymore. But did in those days, I just answered it. Hello, I'd had a couple of beers, by the way. Hello. And and this voice said, hello, I said, yes. I said, yeah, is this, it's Peter Wingard. And I went, yeah, hilarious. Who is it? It's, uh, it's Peter Wingard. Yeah, 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 come on. Which one of you idiots is this? So I said, it's not a bad impression. Who is it? No, Jez, I'm so sorry, but this is Peter Wingard. And my brain went, that's Peter Wingard. You just get on with it. I went, Hello, Peter. I'm so sorry about that. How lovely. What I was I was walking down the middle of the street just going. And he was we chatted for an hour and a half on the phone. And and we didn't talk about Big Finish very much at all. He was just talking to me about what he'd been watching on television. And he'd been watching A Night to Remember, the Titanic film. And he just he just went on. <laughs> It was it was magical, right? But it was a real insight into into what he'd been doing that day, and he just gave me everything. I just thought this is, I thought I was dreaming. Um, and 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 I, I said, will you please please do this audio drama? How much is it? How much are they going to pay? And I said, oh, it's not really oh, it's not really up to me to say. I go, you'll 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 negotiate that with um, with them. I'm I'm just I just encouraging you it'd be wonderful and i'd love to work with you and everyone thinks you're great and blah 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 blah, blah. it's like please just do it and then apparently he he called up and they they gave him the rate and he said it was um it was ridiculously low which which it probably was um so we never got to we never got to act together which is a uh, um, but you never washed your phone again <clears throat> oh no that's in a frame <laughs> <laughs> in terms of studios and green rooms you've worked <laughs> so you did a large project with, with um, Liz Sladen, but you also worked with, with teams of you know, Peter Davidson, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, Tom Baker. Um, yeah. <laughs> how how different is the green room depending on who the, the lead is in the in the production? Now that that is a very good question. That is a that is a top draw journalism question because it it demonstrates an awareness of the fact that there is a huge difference um, depending on who the ringmaster is. And it, and it, each of those actors to whom you have referred have vastly different ways of mastering that ring, can we say? <laughs> so um, now Peter Davison is, what, what, I mean, he Peter Peter really was different. I mean, I obviously he was the first one, so I was kind of frightened of him um, because he was the doctor and I was a, the, the the new kid, and and I tried to keep my mouth shut for as long as humanly possible. And actually, as I was saying to you, Mark Gatiss was the was the one that made me feel as though I could chill out and actually be I'm I'm allowed to be here. I have permission to be here, um, and so I didn't. But so I didn't really engage too much. Um, with Peter, and that's my fault, not his. But um, he, 
he didn't seem to he didn't he didn't perform in the same way which is which is not a negative thing at all it's just an observation but he didn't seem to want to perform not on on mic he was brilliant on mic but in the green room he kind of just just does it whereas the others you mentioned perform um and to, and with with different totally different styles but they perform colin Colin is a menace. <laughs> he's so funny and irreverent and and he's naughty. I think actually that's possibly the best word for him. He's he's naughty and I written and I and I, I'm quite naughty and I I I, like, I could see I was like he got a glint in his eye, this chap. And I I really he was he used to steal scripts and run off with them and things like that. And he'd be like, what? why did he what's just is he supposed to, is that normal and you know and he and he he walks around in his crocs and he drives an open top sports car with a sombrero on and stuff like that and you're like what? but he's and he's always making jokes and um he's a bit of a <laughs> collins a know-all right and he knows everything and he sort of does so you know he can back it up but um i will tell you this this story i can't what what was the story? I think it might have been <clears throat> it might have been the Marion conspiracy, which I think was the second one I did, which is number six on the big Finnish roster. I've uh, I looked it up earlier. I, I'm not an anorak, um, and I was playing a 15 year old anti Catholic conspiracist called William Leaf, and um, we were at lunch, and somebody started talking about the faded Edwardian horror town that is Bognor Regis, and um, um, and I went oh. Bugger Bogner, which is a famous quote. And and Colin went, ah, yes, yes, George the Third. And I went, no, 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 it was George the Fifth. He said, no, 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 no. I think you'll find it was George the Third. I said, no, it was George the Fifth. I know this sort of thing. He went, I know this sort of thing, and I don't say things unless I know they're true. And I was like, Ooh, hello, Colin's getting a bit spiky. And then I was like, well, actually, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. It's George V. I know it's it's a classic pub trivia quiz question. It's I'm surprised you I'm surprised you think it's George the Third. Why would it be George the Third? Did George the Third go to Bogner or not? And he went, I, well, and then Gary intervened and said, This is this is this is how old this was. This is before Google. Google. This is before Google. Google. <laughs> you could not Google it. So Gary said, I know someone that will know this. And Colin knew the person. I can't remember who it was that he phoned. It was either Nick, it was either Nick Pegg or Barnaby Edwards. It was one of the two of them. And and Colin said, okay, well, if you're going to phone Nick stroke Barney, whichever one it was, if you phone them, that then they'll know. I'll take, I'll take. And um, and I said, Fiverr. And Colin went, well, I said, five, five quid. And he went, certainly five pounds. I'll be very happy. Five, five. Yep, fine. Let's let's and we sh we shook on it. And Gary's like, hang on a minute. What are, so just so I'm straight, what are you saying, Colin? And Colin said, George the third or fourth. And I went, well, hang on, how many how many Georges do you want? I said, I'm going with George the fifth. That's just one monarch. How many you want two? And Colin went, well, all right. And I said, no, no, you can have to. You could do, do you want to throw in George the second as well? And he's like, no. Anyway, they phoned up and um, and he goes, Gary said, yeah, I'm so sorry about this, but explain the question. And he went, so who said it? Uh huh. And you're sure? You're 100% sure. Okay. Okay, cool. And he hangs up his mobile phone, which is like this in those days. And uh, and he said, Colin. And Colin went, ha ha! And Gary continued, give Jez a fiver. <laughs> he was absolutely flabbergasted because he's never wrong about stuff like that. So I got a fiver off of Colin Baker. Um, Sylvester... Sylvester is uh, is is what well, he's just like he doesn't I don't think he changes at all he's just uh, it's sort of impish funny um very very kind and um and we were playing a, a trivial pursuit um in in the green room at lunchtime uh, well it was it was like some kind of quiz game with cards and one of the um one of the questions was um who did Britt Eklund describe as a thorough waste of time in bed and I, and I can't remember. It was like Mick Jagger, Rod Stewart, and I don't know. I'll throw, who shall I throw in for good measure that is clearly not part of this? Shaking Stevens. So, um, so and and uh, Sylvester says, 
Oh, good question. Can I phone a friend? And we're like, what do you mean phone a friend? You know, like, he wants to be a millionaire. I said, yeah, all right, phone a friend. And he goes, great. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Brit. <laughs> he, phones, he phones Brit Eklund. <laughs> and he's like, was it Mick? Okay, Mick Jagger is the answer. We're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the sort of nonsense that he comes up with. It's, it was it was super entertaining. Um, Tom Baker, oof, I mean, uh, it's like um, it's like you've got a you've got a ticket to a to a really exclusive club where you get to sit near Tom Baker while he's holding court um and it's like a it's a privilege it's like nothing on earth um really he's this um he's like a planet and he sits on his chair i mean this is we were in um i did two with tom in uh Wad, wadhurst in sussex in my friend paul's um audio sorcery studio and this planet is booming from the corner of the room. And you just, you just sit. I mean, I like to fill in gaps. I like to talk. Um, I like to tell anecdotes. And I like to be part of the conversation and respond. I'm silent for this, for this man. Because if someone else speaks, then you're hearing less from him and everyone feels the same about it. And so just, it's, it's absolutely, it's like reverential, but with bursts of laughter because he's so funny he's, and, and, and sometimes quite angry. And that's brilliant as well. You're like, Oh, and he's talking about how John Dexter really upset him um, when he was working in theater in London years and years ago. And he overlooked him and was really rude to him. And it's still that kind of, visceral anger is still with him now in his 80s he's still angry about it and he said and he just and he he blows up and and you can tell he's just disgusted with this this guy and the way he's behaved and it and we're all just it's 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 a roller coaster and and it's not i mean is, is it a performance is i know i just think i don't think i don't think it is I, it, there's there's no word for it it's just being tom baker and it's just that's unique and it's a privilege to be there and uh, but but eventually you do kind of end up with the freedom to say oh you can i ask you i mean i said I, actually i've got something i'd quite like to ask you and i'd read obviously his who on earth is tom baker book which is um arguably the funniest book ever written uh, on any subject and asked him about his his kids and 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 he was very sensitive to that because I'd, I'd taken the time to to read you know about his life and ask him about it and he was very generous with with his answer and and um so just as a mark of something quite sweet really um he was talking to to um the the, the late great david warner about uh cricket and um for some time and then uh tom talks about an anecdote where he it was an anecdote in, in Who on Earth is Tom Baker? And he said, oh, I, I wrote about this in my book. And I thought, if if there's an opportunity to do what I was hoping to do this weekend, it's probably now. So I reached into my rucksack and pulled out my copy of Who on Earth is Tom Baker? And I said, you mean this book? And he went, ah. Oh. And then I got called in to do a, to do a voice. I was I think I was playing... The TARDIS parrot, some like literally, <laughs> and I had to go. The TARDIS are pretty cheap, pretty cheap, pretty cheap. And uh, I had to go in and do that. And I was like, oh, don't call me in now. I've just, I, I want him to. Oh, I'll do it later. So I got up and went in and started doing my TARDIS bird. And um, I came, I came back about ten minutes later, and the book was on the, on the table, and he'd gone in to do one of his scenes. So I'd, I'd missed the opportunity to get him to sign it. And then I opened it up later on and he'd signed it while I was in the, in the booth. Um, and he, and he called me, he said, <laughs> he called me Chet. <laughs> so it's I've, obviously I've kept it. It's, uh, it's just two Chet, um, which is obviously how we heard people calling me Jez. I, I, I think you're thinking of Chet. Oh. And, uh, and it said, lovely working with you. 
lots of love from old Tom Baker. And it's just, isn't it wonderful? So yeah, um, lovely, lo lovely fella. It's all, but they're all, they're all brilliant. You know, the thing, the thing with Peter was that I was just so like not at home with where I, the my surroundings, and I just was also new. I didn't really get to kind of analyze um, what he was like. And then years later, I worked with him on a thing called Circular Time um, with, with with him and David Warner. Um, and I played this jailer, and um, he found this this this, this characterization quite amusing. And just uh, I really found that, that I was like, oh, this is. This is the guy that I haven't worked that much with, and I always thought, oh, it's Peter Davison because it's how I felt in my first my first gig, and he's just he's really really funny and nice and 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 irreverent himself. So I think that I didn't catch it the first time round. It was the second time where I was like, okay, so he's he's one of the doctors. He's he's doing the thing, but he doesn't do that sort of he doesn't jape about in the way that the the, the other three do. But um, it was still in all you know that's as I say that's not a negative thing. It's just a just a difference. Yeah! <laughs>